everybody to the I'm Fat Podcast. Uh, uh, snacks are uh, best saved for later. With Jay Zawoski. That man ate all our shrimp and two plastic lobsters. And Rick Camp. Out the mist came a beast more stomach than man. <laughs> Welcome in to another edition of the I'm Fat Podcast, brought to you by our sponsors, Charlie the Bacon Guy, Mazda of Orland Park, and Fredo's Culinary Kitchen. I am Rick Camp, alongside fellow fat Jay Zawaski. And Jay, we have we have a lot to get. We, we always say, yeah, we got a decent amount to get to. We legit have a lot to get to this week. We do have a lot, and we have a lot of long voicemails. Oh, okay. Edit yourselves, jerks. But we appreciate you calling in and leaving us voicemails anyway. Uh, good time to remind everybody, by the way, mm-hmm. September 1st, coming up very soon, Rick and I will be interviewing the Weber Grill Master. Get those questions in. They're starting to come in pretty fast and furi- furious. Furious. So if you've been waiting it's to get that interview. question in, get it in. You can leave a voicemail, 708-858-3314, or send us an email, imfatpod at gmail.com. Make sure you're following us on all of our social medias. At I'm Fat Pod, that includes Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, we are uh, we have a Facebook fan page. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm Fat Podcast fans. We've got the YouTube channel, youtubecom slash I'm Fat Podcast. Those episodes drop on Tuesdays. We give priority to the podcast audience. But if you want to watch us on YouTube, we are there as well. We've yes, got our T Public shop. A bunch of people buying stuff. Uh, the sale was this weekend. Mm-hmm. So thanks for buying T uh, T Public merch. That link is in our bio. We've got our Patreon, patreon.com slash I'm fat pod. Give to that so we can give Rick some money because he's still unemployed and driving to Minneapolis. Uh, or what is it? What's the city again? Rochester. Rochester, Minnesota. Uh, there and back every week. So every little bit helps. I'm fat pod uh, at I'm fat pod at Patreon. So uh, those are all the things you can do for us and we would greatly appreciate it. Or just listen. If you don't have any money to give or any shirts you want to buy, Leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. That would be hugely, hugely helpful. We're still uh, getting close to 500. Yeah. We, we, we have not yet reached it, but we are within 10. We've been close for too long. Let's get over yes, that hump have. this week. Le- 10 reviews this week, please. Mm-hmm. And if you leave a review, send us a screenshot of the review. I'm fatpod at gmail.com, and I will select one of you to win a prize pack that I will mail out sometime within the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what we call that? A tease. <laughs> So, Rick, I didn't talk to you about this in our pre-show show, which usually okay. goes on for about a half hour before we hit record. Pretty much. Um, maybe one day we'll do like an uncut uh, where Rick and I just talk shit about people and just let it roll. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, you know what that is? That's the uh, cold open. That that's what we call it. That's what we call it in the old podcast biz. Yeah. So that's the uh, the Tony Gill special where he will snipe whoever is there by letting all that stay in. Yeah. Yeah. With Tony, the mics are always on. Yep. Uh, I'm just going to let that one fly. This is interesting. Yep. You're allowed to say you hate the team you cover and get away with it because mm-hmm. uh, you're a piece. Um, I should probably delete that. All right. I won't. Um, today, I went to uh, Wilmington, Illinois, where my Which brother is. Place. It is a place uh, where my brother in law has a uh, river, a house on the river, like a little retreat that his family shares for my niece's uh, birthday. Is it a van? No, it's a nice house with a pool and everything. It's a nice But it place. is down by the river. It is by the river. It's not a van. Okay. There are vans there, but we were not in or near any of them. Okay. Um. So, you know, typical family get together. Mm-hmm. Both sides are there. One's on one side of the house. The other's on the other. It was very much like a segregated party, which was kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Um. But the weirdest part is... We're all sitting around. My brother-in-law, Chris, is getting ready to fire up the grill. Mm -hmm. And my sister-in-law, Natalie, is walking around with, like, a piece of paper. And she's like, do you want a burger or a hot dog or a hamburger? I'm like, I don't – I had to order? I'm ordering at a barbecue? There's not a a line. So you need to get up to the front of the line, (laughs) see what both look like, and make a decision from there. You can't be be doing this willy-nilly ahead of time. That's what I was saying. Like, Don't make me decide now because I might really like the hot dog or really like the hamburger. Or the patties might be smaller than I thought or whatever. I can't decide pre-cooking. I have never experienced this. I was stunned. I didn't say anything because I was like, who does this? Right. Who walks around and takes orders at a barbecue? You take everything you bought. 
all the hot dogs, all the burgers. You cook mm-hmm. all of them. You leave five of them without cheese for yeah. the weirdos that don't want cheese on their burgers. And the rest is all ready to go. And people just grab what they want. That's how it's done. And guess what? That's mm-hmm. how it ended up being anyway, despite her <laughs> efforts to, or, to like take everybody's order. Yeah. I would, what I do, and maybe, I don't know if you're the same way or people you barbecue with are the same way, Rick. When you've got a group of people and you're making burgers, mm-hmm. you just say, does anyone not want cheese? Exactly. And then two weirdos will raise their hand. You throw them out of the party. Right. And then you cook cheese on all the burgers. No, yes. but honestly, like you just see like, okay, how many do I need to have without cheese for those people? Sure. And I'll usually do an extra two because someone yeah. will always have not heard it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But walking around taking orders, I don't That's know. Weird. It's making me rethink this whole thing. Mm-hmm. Did you tip at the end of the night? No. Okay. The tip is this. Just cook it all, which oh, okay. is what Chris did. <laughs> he yes. just took everything, grilled it all. It was great. By the way, there's a place. I have not been to the actual restaurant, but Babe's, and maybe someone like out in the Joliet area can tell us mm-hmm. about this. Mm-hmm, babe. Uh, Babe's yeah. Hot Dogs in Joliet. Yeah. Chris goes there and just like buys their dogs and then brings them home and grills them. They were oh. great. And they're big. Like honk, like Tommy Lee's. They are mm-hmm. big hot dogs. And yes. uh, if if you're out near Joel, yeah, try babes, but just take them home and grill them. They were excellent. Okay, excellent. I had two. I had a dog and uh, two dogs in a hot in a burger, and I was mm-hmm. like almost comatose asleep. Oh, nice. Then I had two pieces of cake and three Rice Krispie treats. But that's it. <laughs> yep. God, Rice Krispie treats, dude. Yeah. When done correctly. mm Hmm. Hope's aunt makes the best. And you don't need a bunch of crap in them either. No. Marshmallow and Rice Krispies. Yes. Just a lot of marshmallow. Yes. I want it to be I want my fingertips to be wet when I'm done eating it. Like moist, you know? The rice krispie treats. Oily. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, nothing worse than a dry rice krispie treat. That is true. Yeah, that's it, one of my favorite rice krispie treats is the one from uh Bockwinkles. Although that one is very dense. It's a it is, it is <laughs> extremely dense, but it's not dry. So it's a it's it really strikes that balance well, but you don't get shorted because you see like the the actual dimensions and you're like, okay, for the price, I don't know. But then when you like actually hold the thing and see the weight, you're like, oh yeah, this is worth it. Yeah, it's a doorstop. You could just set it down and your <laughs> yes. door's not gonna close. Uh, it is huge. Every time I went to Bachwinkles, I would get it. That's mm-hmm. on Lake in Stetson. Correct. Like upper, yeah, basically. Like upper. So if you yeah. were to come down, if you're coming down Michigan Avenue, you want to mm-hmm. head east on Lake and it will take you like uphill. Yes. And then you take a slight left on Stetson and it's like mm-hmm. right there on the corner. It's a little grocery yep. store, mm-hmm. but they've got a killer deli. Yes. Uh, great Boar's soup. Meat. Yeah. Yeah. That's a place I went all the time when I was a BVM. Yes. All the also, time. they have the black bags, so it almost looks like you're coming out of a porn shop, even almost. though you've just got like a sandwich and a drink or something. I, I used to keep, because they charge you for the bags there, so I used to keep a yeah. stash of Bockwinkle's bags in my drawer. And they're nice, too. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're like high-quality bags. They're way too good to use for dog poop. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, they are way too good. I think that's actually poop. Bockwinkle's slogan. <laughs> Bockwinkle's. <laughs> Our bags are too good to use on dog poop. Yes, yeah. it rolls off the tongue. Freezing. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like the timing of the dog poop conversation. Yes. And then you saying it rolls off the tongue. Mm-hmm. Not great. I'm yeah. going to be honest. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Usually I'm the one calling you out for things. So turnabout's fair play. Yeah, no, I put my foot in my mouth all the time. <laughs> uh, it happens all the time. Yeah. So, okay. But my, my sister-in-law is crazy here, right? Like that's not... I oh, mean, yeah. there's been a yeah. lot of evidence to that anyway. There's but. right it, now not trying to psychoanalyze too much because, you know, that couldn't get anybody in trouble. Um, but generally a very organized person like needs things more or less a certain or try at least no, attempts to. I you know? would not say that she's not unorganized, but I would not okay. say like she's like an OCD. Like, okay. Because this, al- this almost it almost sounds like a Claire thing from Modern Family or something like that. Yeah, no, I don't think so. I think what I think when you are hosting, and there are yeah. some people there of advanced age, you want to make sure everybody gets what they want. And I think she was just trying to be overly mm-hmm. um, 
That's fair. Accommodating is probably the word, yeah. but yeah. I think as she was taking orders, she was realizing like, why am I doing this? Like, this yeah. is dumb. Just yeah. shout out who wants a burger with no cheese and you get a count of hands, mm-hmm. add two or three, depending on the size of the crowd and call it a day. It's like when someone's making one drink at a time in bar rescue and John Taffer goes behind the person and says, who else wants this drink? And then like eight people raise their hand and they're like, and make 10, <laughs> you know, that's what yeah. it is. That's exactly right. So yeah. uh, anyway, it worked out great. The barbecue mm-hmm. was wonderful. I got to hang with my goddaughter. Kids are like, I don't know how you are with kids. Um, yeah. Kids either love me or hate mm-hmm. me. Oh, I, I generally really like, I've always vibed well with kids. Like I've had basically everybody be like, you're, you know, you'd be a good dad. And I'm like, working on it (laughs) so that's a whole that's a that's a whole different podcast but uh Uh, but yeah and i mean like and mind you this is a we'll bookmark this for later but like i got to see my godson uh and his sister today and they're like two of my favorite people so cool you know yeah yeah and and that's always great to get to do that my goddaughter likes me so that's good and my niece likes me Mm-hmm. Um, but some kids look at me and are like, Ugh. I don't know if it's some, some kids get freaked out by glasses. Okay. I don't know if you've ever, you don't, you used to wear them. I used to, um, I never really had any issue. It's yeah. more like they want to grab them and right. throw them or yeah. break them. Um, there is some uncertainty, but, uh, my, my goddaughter, Ruth, she loves me. So that's good. She is nice. my niece and my goddaughter simultaneously. Oh. And there's, there's few better feelings than when like you can make a kid happy. Yes. I'm one of the few people that can hold her and she doesn't freak out. Because she's, nice. you know, kids like born within the last two years, mm-hmm. they don't know anyone aside from their parents. That's yeah, true. You know, like it's such a weird, like and my nephew Jack is like that too, where it took him a long time, like when things started to get like kind of air quotes back to normal mm-hmm. to warm up to anyone other than his parents. Yeah. Because no one was going anywhere. No, like, And even if you were going to the store or whatever, there mm-hmm. still weren't like big family gatherings where you get to know these people. Yeah, and get passed around like a baton. Yes. Yeah. And even if even if you did go to a big I was party, gonna say, and I don't even mean that as a negative. No, I mean really. that as yeah. like, yeah, you get to know everybody. But it's like, like it's like yeah, everybody's it's like, holding it's like social, you, everybody's yeah. It's like the socializing for dogs, where it's like you have a puppy, you take it to a dog park so it can, you know, one get to see what it's like to be with other with other animals, and then you can see what you know, like what the dog is like, and also maybe if the dog doesn't have anybody else at home, someone to put it in their place every once in a while. Like yeah. those type of things need to happen. Correct. Anyway, for the record, I also believe you'd be a good dad. Uh, Thank you. I just can't help you in that department. Yeah, I, I wouldn't want you to try. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we may be friends we may have good chemistry on the podcast but uh chemistry stops some, there yeah yes yes chemistry stops there and biology takes over and that's well, that's where we hit the old roadblock that too that too anywho the, anywho <laughs> one thing that we were able to do maybe not together this week but we both experienced was uh crumble cookies yes because you texted me at one point this week. I don't even know what day, honestly, anymore, because they're the, like they are all the same. That like any more than ever in my life, every day is the same. Yep. So, uh, you texted me, go try the French silk pie cookie now, <laughs> in caps now. Yes. So what did I do later that day? I went to Crumble <laughs> Cookies and I got a four pack. So with recommendations from you and Addy, so what, so what was, so what was your whole experience leading into going to crumble this week? Uh, we were in the air. Why did we go to Mokina? We were there for something else. Oh, I had to go to JC Penny, put a pin in that. We'll do that next. Uh, okay. Um, Mokina. Yes. We went to Mokina. So I can go to JC Penny and, and in the same parking lot is crumble cookies. And I had mm-hmm. seen that the, one of the cookies of the week was the French silk cookie. Mm-hmm. And when I think of French silk, I think of you because yes. of a your love for all things French silk and the fact that you worked at Baker Square. Yes. And I wanted to see if this thing held a candle to the actual Baker Square French silk pie. Mm-hmm. And I took one bite, and that's when I texted you. You need to go <laughs> now yeah. to crumble uh, because it was awesome. It was so freaking good. I know you got some different stuff, but we mm-hmm. did the four pack too. 
Okay. Um, we did the chocolate chip, which mm-hmm. I always do. We yep, did. I, did I know there's one you didn't do the peanut butter blossom. Yeah, no chance. Uh, peanut butter cookie with like a, a ganache of chocolate on the middle. And uh-huh. then we did the caramel corn. Uh, I got that one cookie as well. And I saw mm-hmm. the other one you got was at the raspberry raspberry cheesecake. Yeah, yeah that I've had was, that before, man. That was so good. I think the first bite, it took me a second for, to be like, OK, cheesecake. Mm hmm. Like the raspberry like hits you and it's really, really good. And the quality of the cookie is great. And then like I took, so what I initially did was because I wasn't necessarily thinking about it. So I'd eaten a big, a pretty big meal, not too far before I got the text from you. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm at least going to take a bite of all of these tonight. Just so, just so that I can say I have, and then throw them in the fridge and they stay great in the fridge, obviously. But, uh, yeah, it was that French silk cookie is unreal because it's basically like almost like if you were to think of a skillet brownie just without the sear on it. Yes, that's kind of like what it is because it, then it has the lip and then that's where they put in more of like your your French silk pie filling and you get the shavings and the whipped cream and oh, yeah, I, it's and so good. I wish it's hard to explain crumble to people. So if yeah. you've never been, they have like four or five cookies of the week mm-hmm. uh, and it changes every week, but they're the same at every crumble. So yes. it's C-R-U-M-B-L. I know there's mm-hmm. Mokina, uh, Naperville, Orland. There's a bunch out. I in went that. to the Oak Brook one. Okay. Oak Brook's got one too. Um, some, the chocolate chip, the, I think, the, uh, I think maybe the chocolate chip was the only one we got this week that mm-hmm. was served warm. Some are served warm, some are served chilled, some mm-hmm. are served room temperature. Like it varies from cookie to cookie. So yeah, usually like the, what we the do, caramel popcorn one is like a room temperature. Right. The cookie, yeah, the milk chocolate's warm. And then like the raspberry and the French silk are chilled. Right. So what we have done every time we've gone is you order like the four pack. Yeah. And they're bi- like, they're pretty substantial. They're and m- now mind you, they have to be because they're expensive. Yeah. And I don't know if they're quite the size of a Mrs. Fields cookie, like the... You know, like you go in there and get the M M&M and M cookie or whatever. Sure, but, but it's in terms probably, of height, yeah, it's thick, mm-hmm. and they they do not like sk- the toppings are not like subtle, right? Like if you saw that French silk cookie from the top with mm-hmm. no context, yeah. you would think that's a pie. Like, yes, it looks hundred percent. Yeah, so it's it's. I'm telling you, it. it I, what is the four pack? It's like sixteen bucks or something. Yeah, yeah, basically. It it's it's it is actually like if you could comprehend in your mind four cookies for $16 being worth it. That tells yeah. you what crumble is in terms of yeah, quality and execution. It's, def- and everything. it's definitely once a week, you scout it, you see what yeah. the flavors are of the week. If there's at least two that intrigue you, then you go and get the four pack. Yes. And I think like this time we were like, Oh, we're only going to do three. And the lady was like, I'm not trying to upsell you, but if you buy another one, it's like, you're only paying for like a third of a cookie. We're like, okay, sure. Like, yeah, <laughs> twist your arm. <laughs> twist my arm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but yeah, and the, oh, the the car the uh, the Addy recommendation, the caramel popcorn one, mm-hmm. really really good. Yep, I liked that one a lot. And then obviously, yeah, obviously a milk chocolate chip. You can't go wrong. No, I so yeah yeah, he, and I mean like I posted on was it Instagram ori- originally some you know some Marvin Gaye along with the picture <laughs> of, of said crumble box and. I it was not performative. Let me tell you, that is a wonderful box. That if it was if it was the human form of that box, the child would have happened. Like the <laughs> the quality of a cookie box, but equated to hu- to a human. Then that's well. For one thing, that person would never would never date me. <laughs> but you know. <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to what you're saying. <laughs> I don't know how to respond I'll just to do what, what I'm I, saying. I'll just do what I do when we used to work together at Discord and you talked basketball. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's such a high quality cookie box that if you take the quality of cookie box above replacement, mm-hmm. equate that to humans, that yeah. person would never date me. But in theory, if that was possible, yes. You'd be surprised. Have that you seen, be... by the way, uh, there's a guy on TikTok mm-hmm. who is a fat, yes. not a bad looking fat. He's like us, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. like we're in the upper tier of attractive fatness, I think. 
maybe I'm kidding myself, but fine. But this yeah, guy, you are. this guy yeah. goes to girls and he's like, if I was skinny, would you date me? And just puts mm-hmm. a mic in front of them. And they're all like nines and tens. Yeah. Okay. And, and the, I would say 75% of them say I would date you now. They're like, I would that's date you a, as that's you are right there's now. a microphone slash camera. <laughs> it could be. Also, I am doing a very fat person. Well, not even a fat person thing. It's warm in here. And my air conditioner just shut off. So I'm going to stand up. I am going to <laughs> lower the temperature on that. So the air conditioner starts again. And maybe this is a great time for you to talk about Mazda of Orland Park. I was going to, I was going to just play like a little musical interlude while you do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Rick. Go turn your AC on. We'll get it. And I'll do the I'll do the Mazda Berlin Park read <laughs> while Rick goes and turns the air conditioner on. Go visit our friends at Mazda of Orland Park. This is a great time to tune into the YouTube to see Rick's uh, sweaty leather seat uh, <laughs> in the background. I'm actually going to Mazda of Orland Park. Uh, you're listening to this on Monday. I'm going on Monday to get my first oil change in my brand new CX-30. Man, I love driving that car. Anytime there's a long destination like Wilmington, Illinois, where I was on Sunday... Love driving it there. I get excited for road trips because they're awesome in that new CX-30. Go get yourself one at Mazda of Orland Park, 8910 West 159th Street, 708-444-3200, MazdaofOrlandPark.com. Make sure you ask for Eric Vates, and he will get you squared away. And Rick has returned Mm -hmm. from turning on his air conditioner. You got to get a remote control AC, buddy. I I do, but I have it right here, but the angle... From where I'm at, okay. it doesn't recognize it. Also, it must be cooling down outside because it did not turn. The air did not turn back on. So I had to put it on the fan and turn the fan up to a higher level. Okay. It's so, 69 degrees currently. That's nice. Yeah. But, it's know, a nice night. Yeah. But sorry for right now, we're just uh, going to rock the fan and I'm going to be uh, r- wiping the old brow for the rest of the podcast. Well, no one can see you sweating on the podcast. So oh, you're that's okay. good. I'm just like glistening. In, in I don't, a I nice don't see you glistening fashion. on your camera. I think you're okay. That's good. All right. I'm going to stay in the cookie beat before okay. I go to JCPenney. Uh, on your advice, I tried the Tim Tams. Yes. Uh, and the caramel. What is the it? Chewy caramel. Chewy caramel. Or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and you dubbed them last week mm-hmm. the greatest like mass produced cookie. Yes. I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. On the greatest, mm-hmm. but it's top five for sure. It's so good. It it was very good, very chewy. Mm-hmm. Uh, a good as you described, a really nice like chew to crunch to chocolate to caramel. Like the ratios on it were all perfect. Yes, I will still take a double stuffed Oreo or a uh, El Fudge mm-hmm. and maybe a Fudge Stripe over those. Mm. But it's right there. It's in the team photo. Yeah, it's on you know the first team All American list to me. Yeah, and and if anything, if people want to dock it because there's not as many per package, fair. I can I, understand yeah, that. I was not doing that, um, mm-hmm. but uh, I, I I was very impressed. I liked it the most of the people in the house, but mm-hmm. I'm not as picky as some of the people in the house, which we'll get to in a little bit. Well, they're both wrong, <laughs> and you can tell them I said that. Although here, don't can, worry. <laughs> And you can print it. <laughs> Hope listens every episode and corrects me on things. That's not where we went. We went to this place and it was here. Oh, yeah, right. I you ass. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, JC Penny. Yes. My best friend, Jill, who I've spoken mm-hmm. about a lot on this podcast, yes. she listens all the time, mm-hmm. is getting married uh, next weekend. Nice. And as you know, mm-hmm. one of my medications has caused me to lose some weight. Yes, I have noticed that. But it's not, it doesn't count if I'm losing it because of medicine I take because I'm so fat. <laughs> I'm doing nothing. to. Uh, all I've done to lose this weight is to eat worse. So my doctor's like, Jesus, we got to put you on something else before you die. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, to be fair, you have the makings of a jawline. <sighs> okay, anyway, like, so the like point com- is... Compared to, compared to this... All of this, this is the downside of where all my fat gets distributed pretty equally is that it adds more to the face, Whatever, less, less in the stomach and, and whatever, but uh, more in the face. Okay. Anyway, I'm uncomfortable yes. with this conversation. Um, sure. So the suits I have don't mm-hmm. fit me anymore. 
mm-hmm. and they're out of style. Like the pants are real. Like even when I was fitting into them properly, they were okay. like too baggy. Oh, you were like 2003 NBA draft style. <laughs> it's actually exactly like Joakim Noah's suit. <laughs> That's the suit I have. No, so I, it was time for something new. Um, but I found out that her wedding and my cousin Nick's wedding, mm-hmm. uh, Nick is getting married next month, are like pretty casual. Okay. So I just went looking nice. for, I didn't really know what I wanted to wear, honestly. Mm-hmm. So I know JCPenney is a good place to go to find reasonably priced, nice, formal stuff. My first thought was I was yes. going to wear like, a button down with a tie and a vest mm-hmm. over it, like a suit vest. Oh, look at you! Going but do the they extra all mile. do they all come with like silky backs? Yes, every vest has that. As far as I know, even if they're not intended to be worn under a suit, I think so. Hmm. If you know the answer to this, I'm fatpot at gmail dot com. Let me know. Anyway, mm-hmm. you oh, about a month or two ago, mm-hmm. we we're talking about the Shaq line, the Shaquille O'Neal line of clothing, which yep. looked really nice. Yes. I really liked the, like, there was a really nice navy blue and, like, red plaid sport coat that I almost yeah, the bought. Yeah, s- the style of it is really good. The style is great, but they were all, and maybe this was a smaller JCPenney, so maybe this okay. has something to do with it. The only sizes they had were, like, enormous. I'm, yeah. like, a 50 regular in suit. Okay. And they had, like, 58 and 60. Like, they were, like, 4 or 5X equivalent I even, shirts. I don't even know, because, like, when I got my suit, I got it tailored. I did uh, right away. I didn't even look at what size it is. You just so threw like it on and saw what fit, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. I had a person working with me at Ye Old Men's Warehouse, and uh, and they were like, "Here, I sh- yeah. Well, if, when I but need I, a suit, but and I, I will at yeah. some point. I'll like I'll I go needed. There. To, I wanted to get a, a real suit because of you know, like it was as we discussed here it was connor's wedding so i knew it was going to be a, ni- a nicer affair and all that stuff so i made sure to uh dress to him yeah covid bailed me out of connor's wedding yeah term- i wanted to go but I, I i was about to buy a suit i yeah, had a whole with dan <laughs> sorry uh <laughs> but I, I ended up not having to buy a suit because of covid true thanks covid um <laughs> it's about time he did something nice uh so anyway uh, the Shaq stuff was too big, mm-hmm. so I found another lesser-sized athlete clothing line of, of uh, or, uh, clothing line. Michael Strahan. <laughs> he has his own line? <laughs> yes. I didn't know that. I got a Michael Strahan. Uh, I wouldn't call it navy blue. I wouldn't mm-hmm. call it royal blue, but somewhere Would you in call between it giant's there. blue? No. Okay. No, it's not that. Maybe Patriot's blue. Okay. Uh, sport coat. Yeah. So I think I'm going to wear that, and I'm going to wear a lighter blue shirt underneath and wear, like, gray pants. Mm-hmm. That's a good look, right? I have no yeah, idea. Yeah, I think so. Um, so anyway, that was the uh, that was the, that was was the the athlete that's a size down from Shaq yes. <laughs> that I was able to buy. It was nice, though, because a nice cut, like, big in the shoulders, mm-hmm. narrower down low to make you look thinner. Yeah. Oh, nice. Because okay. my issue is always the shoulders in the back. Yep. Because I'm real wide. Here. Like you, yeah, you and I are very similar up top. Yes. Um, so that was the thing. And Hope's like, that looks really nice. And, like, and if my wife compliments me, that means it does look nice. Mm-hmm. So I bought that. Congrats. But on the way to buying the stuff, I was trying yeah. to get an idea of what I wanted to wear. Yeah. So I Googled. Uh, what's the term we came up with? Big and tall. Yes. Fashion icons. Okay. Okay. So three results came up. And... Feel free to play along at home with Big Rick. And tall fashion icons. <laughs> t- I actually typed in fat fashion icons. <laughs> okay. Are they all alive? Uh, all of them are alive as of the time we're recording this podcast. Okay, that's, yes. That's, a, that's an upset. <laughs> all of them are, mm, I would say, under 50. Okay. Hang on. Let me, let me check um, one of them. Okay. All of them are still relevant. Hmm. Is one of them the guy that played Cam on Modern Family? Uh, that is a good guess, but no. Eric Stone Street, no. Yes. Okay. Okay. One um, is 46, one is 47, and one is 38. I'm going to do so bad on this. All right. I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. Uh, two are whites, and one is Arabic? That should be a hint. 
It should. Oh, it's probably a really good hint, but I'm so bad with actors' names. <laughs> hey, well, this this is a, a figure from music. A from figure music. from music. I'm such an idiot, though. DJ like, Khaled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, well, like I said, <laughs> idiot. So I looked up his for his fashion. Okay. And I said, no. As the kids <laughs> say, this ain't it. Uh, this is not how I'm dressing. Now, there is a there is one picture of him that I liked where okay. he was wearing like a lavender suit mm-hmm. with a white shirt underneath. And that looked good. But I, I am not confident enough to pull off a lavender suit. That's fair. I Yeah, I can't do that. I can't mm-hmm. do that. Okay, one is very famous for being fat and has lost weight recently. Um, but he's kind of fluctuated over the years. Jonah Hill. Oh. Yeah, Jonah yeah, Hill's another he's, one. He's boy, he's been on the roller coaster more than anybody, it feels like. Yeah, I really like him, by the way. I think he's a really interesting and thoughtful dude. Mm-hmm. Um, and I he's like super, super like mental health uh aware and uh, okay. ambassador and all that stuff. So the first picture I find of Jonah Hill in formal wear, yeah. he's wearing <laughs> a ro- a powder blue, like Carolina blue suit with in- no shirt underneath. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently Jonah Hill has like a pirate ship tattoo on his chest. And I said to Hope, like, I could do this look, but I'm going to have to go get a pirate chi- a pirate ship tattoo on my chest to pull it off. Oh, no, you could just get a henna. <laughs> <laughs> Make it even cooler. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, again, as the kids say, this ain't it. Okay. Uh, the other one, and I don't know if uh-huh. you know who this is, if I say the name, David Harbour. Do you know who David Harbour is? Not off name. Okay, David Harbour is the guy who plays Hopper in Stranger Things. He also played Hellboy. Oh, okay. Um, yes, yeah, you yeah. would know him if you saw him. And his style yeah. is a little more on brand, and I felt like kind of like, mm-hmm. okay, cool. Like, he's not a fat guy. He's kind of a – he's just a big dude. Yeah. And he was he, – he, I know he lost weight for a role, but he's – he is – he's ju- – he's – what do they call it? Like, dad bod? Yes. He's a dad bod kind of a guy. But then I saw a picture of him wearing a kilt. I thought, I don't think that'd be gonna work. That would be a bold strategy, <laughs> Cotton. <laughs> you know, I was very close to joining uh, the Shavin, Shannon Rovers uh, backpipe band back in high school. Oh, but yeah? I was I wanted to be a drummer, but that, because I'm left handed, I couldn't march in formation. Like I would have looked out of sync, so I couldn't do it. So I would have worn That's a kilt lame. very often if that was the case. Oh, okay. Um, so I just got the sport coat. Long story short, but I just wanted to see if you could guess oh, who no. some of the fat Clearly fashion no. icons were. <laughs> I my pop culture knowledge is so impressively terrible that like I don't even know that people really understand how bad it is at this point because now I've hit a point where I've also given up on the caring about stuff. Oh no, you shouldn't be. So uh, yeah, like that type of thing. I'm like, yeah, I'm 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 gonna be bad. I'm looking and at the I will be exposed uh, for that. I just looked up the 50, 50 most stylish fat guys of all time. 50. Fats Navarro. I don't know who that is. Fat Joe. Fats uh, Domino got to be on Huggy there Hopkins. I don't know who he's. Judah Friedlander. Oh, I know who that is. That's the guy who wears like the, the trucker hats to say something funny on him all the time. Oh, okay. Anthony Anderson. See, that's, a, yes. that's who I should have looked up. Mm. He's got good style. He's a guy with, he usually dresses pretty well and like not way over the top. Yeah, see, he's got like kind of a plaid suit. See if this is where I should have gone. I blew it. Anyway, I like my sport coat, so I'll make it work. (laughs) (laughs) I'm I'm glad we came to a resolution. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. Um, But I I just thought it was funny. DJ Khaled. I'm like, yeah, I could dress like him. Whoop. No, I can't. Speaking of uh, fashion, in a way, that has, (laughs) that is new, Mm -hmm. that is uh, disturbing, especially for fats. If anyone has played Madden, the new Madden, <laughs> you sent me the pictures of this. Like, listen, the Bears O-line sucks yes. and is going to this year. However, they don't have to be done this dirty in the way they look in a video game. So the first time I, I noticed this is I, my, the first game I played, I just hit like random opponent and I played the Steelers. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. So playing the Steelers, and, and I'm and I noticed that their punter Presley Harvin the third, yes, six foot two sixty three. Yeah, you know what he looks like? He looks like he ate Percy Harvin the third. Yes. So I'm like, okay, that's a big dude, uh, and he's not like 
a muscular NFL player. And if you're watching right. on YouTube, if you're not watching on YouTube, make sure you're watching because uh, you can see these photos of the mm -hmm. the fat players in Madden. Yes, buddy. It's not just Presley <laughs> Harvin. I, I was I was played a game against the Dolphins last night. And yeah. I just started sending you photos. Yes, you did <laughs> from my phone. Because <laughs> what's great about uh, the Xbox is you can just upload your upload your images and just download them real easy. Oh, nice! I have um, uh, Armstead, the tackle for the Dolphins, yeah. is blocking Robert Quinn, who is very svelte. Uh, mm -hmm. But Armstead has like dumpy butt, <laughs> like where the <laughs> like where the pants are sort of sagging mm -hmm. a little bit, and like in the butt. And then uh, is it Michael Schofield? Yeah. Uh, Kendall Coyne's husband. Uh, yes. Just a doughy mess of these Madden guys. Like, you want to talk about pear-shaped? They're yeah, frog. They these are frog-shaped humans. Yeah, like, it's really doing them a disservice. Because, <laughs> like, Michael Schofield, if you look up a picture of him, is not that. Yeah. He's not. And neither is Cody Whitehair. Yeah. <laughs> Cody Whitehair looks like me. Or Whitey like Coat Hair, as Dave Wonset calls him. <laughs> the greatest thing uh and riley reef is also pictured in this photo next to uh yes. whitey coat hair uh, it's just if i was an nfl lineman and there's still time uh i would send a very angry <laughs> note to the creators of men saying hey why do i look like a a person with no muscle definition at all mm -hmm. like uh the, i've heard the term fat like a woman described uh okay. to describe some uh, a particular person i know who i will not mention um and and that's very accurate like i'm talking about fat with no muscle definition yeah. these are nfl linemen right they have been done dirty by madden mm -hmm. and i think it should not be stand they can't stand for this it's it's ridiculous right. and i will say i had no intention of buying madden this year uh because it's been kind of crappy for the last few years but i get a free trial because i have ea play because then okay. I get NHL 22 like a week early. So I'm all mm -hmm. in on that. Um, and I tried the trial. I'm like, okay, this is a lot better this year. It's not perfect, but it's a lot yeah. better. So I did pick it up this year. And man, the linemen look awful. Yes, they do. They all look so fat. And it, I think it's like an offensive lineman thing only. Because I was going through the defensive lineman and it wasn't quite yeah, like that. Yeah, bad. Yeah, it's... Uh, it, uh, dumpy is the word to use. Dude, like, it's just all really butt. Like, like, you want to talk like the I'm Fat podcast, like tuba song? Yes. That that That's the sound that all these Madden yeah, characters should make. That's the outside zone blocking. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's the sound effect they use? Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I, I felt bad for these guys. If I, if I was a player and I turned on Madden, I'd be like, yeah. wait a minute. Is this what I look like? Right. Honey? Is this what my ass looks like? No, no, honey. Well, Yours is fine. Yours is nice. And then <laughs> and then there's like just some uniforms in and of themselves that are just so bad for linemen. Like I'll never forget when NIU was in the Orange Bowl. And like NIU has very traditional, it's either essentially like like mo more often than not, they go with like red jersey or white jersey and black pants. But at that point in time, that was all basically what they did. Well, they're like, hey, we're in the Orange Bowl. We're going to go crazy. So they had a white jersey with silver numbers and red pants. It almost looked like Dan and Terry's like Cuban baseball oh, pants. And for the linemen, it's just unfortunate because it's too bright of a red. Like it's close to like the red on the shirt that I'm wearing, like not like a dark red. So for offensive linemen, it was not like it even made like Jordan Lynch kind of look like yeah, like not great. The in next those. great, the next uh, Walter Payton. Yeah, the next Walter Payton. Or um, I on like Facebook memories, something popped up that I had forgotten about when uh, Lynch was going to be in the draft or had just signed with the Bears after being undrafted. Mm -hmm. That um, uh, that he is a LeBron level athlete. <laughs> someone someone <laughs> said that. And like, what? <laughs> exactly i was like that's incredible oh man i love that that is the most like like you know and you know you could picture the type of guy that that would have sent that to oh i know exactly who it was yeah yeah no that's yep. that's correct yes um yeah so th yeah that's the thing oh on the football topic actually oh. yesterday yes. for me 
mm-hmm. was uh, my big like fantasy football draft with uh, people that I've either met through the league or through like my time at uh, IMS and that type of thing. So like it's one of the like one, maybe two times a year we all see each other. So it ends up being a big blowout cool. at my buddy Pete's place. Who went first and- overall? Uh, well, it was a keeper league, so a lot of guys oh, okay. were already gone. So, like, Derrick Henry went number one because the guy who went number one took McCaffrey last year and mm. was like, I'll be damned if I'm making that mistake again. Yeah. So I got to take McCaffrey at oh, number nice. two, and I'm actually excited about that. But you, unfortunately, you took Brennan McCaffrey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, Team No Cheese. That's what we're going to be called, except for pizza. That's a joke for square people. Sorry. Yes. It, yeah, it really is. But Thanks, Odyssey. Um, <laughs> Yeah. yeah, banner week for Odyssey, <laughs> by the way. Oh, they're Any, killing everybody. Oh, well, they definitely killed one station at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Pete's wife, Erica, who I'm friends with as well, like she went all out for this and like for the food and all the stuff, because the way we, we've done it is like in terms of league fees, uh, Pete doesn't pay because he hosts the draft every year and Erica cooks and all that oh, stuff. Cool. So it's like, so it's like, yeah. So it's like that takes care of his league fee and all that stuff. You don't have to do that. Um, but I mean, there was everything. She is notorious for making fantastic pulled pork. Oh, so we had pulled pork sandwiches and we did not get the F out of there. Uh, <laughs> so that, that was a thing. There was like cheesy hash browns. Oh God. Oh, dude. The cheesy hash browns were wonderful. Let's see. I tried to write everything down that I can remember. Um, I think you need to send a... her the song. Send her the song that I told you about last week. I hope your husband dies. Uh, <laughs> yes. Send that to her and just be like, and just hope for the best, Rick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Then um, pasta salad, like real, like real good pasta salad. Had that today, and it had salami in it. Or whatever that, I don't know if it's salami, whatever that like marbled meat yeah. is they put in the pasta salad. Yes. Maybe marbled meat will be my fantasy team name <laughs> this year. There were, And I, I will admit this on this podcast. Yeah. I ate something that could closely resemble a traditional salad. What? Because it had the nacho cheese Doritos in it. Okay. Then you... <laughs> I don't think that's a salad. Then I think you're safe. <laughs> it had all. The, it had most of the other elements of of a traditional salad, with nacho cheese Doritos, and then the like. What is it like the Catalina sauce or not sauce, but like dressing or whatever? Yeah, the craft whatever. Yeah, so had that on there as well. That was um, really good. No, that's good. And uh, the dessert was like apple crumble. Well, that's a salad. That is definitely yes. a salad. And then there was like chips and dips and all that stuff. So it was like, dude, it was amazing. So it was like getting to see people you only see once a year, uh, you know, just BSing with friends and, and all that goes along with that um, and great food along with it. So I will give an official. Hold on. Oh, the chili time hats official, coming out. Yes. The uh, official <laughs> the tip of the uh, chili time hat to erica for all the work she did getting everything ready for that because it was fantastic and it was pretty much once the draft started she was like and i'm gone <laughs> she took the, it's she gonna took smell their like daughter. farts in here very quickly it's gonna smell like farts <laughs> the guys are gonna say things so yeah, yeah. It, it was uh yeah it was erica and their daughter joya they went and had a girl's day good parenting by good her. call yes, yes good job um i gotta ask you were yes. any chicago bears selected yes Montgomery one one was kept it's got to be Montgomery fields with a last round pick yeah the only pick. one it was as a keeper no Montgomery was picked Herbert was picked Mooney uh, Mooney Come makes at. sense defense get picked no no but Komet so Komet's gonna There's be that. here that's yeah, gonna be so the guy yes I'm biased one. shut up Yes. Yes, you are. <laughs> but yeah, so, so there was uh yeah, there was one receiver picked, I think. I don't know. All right. Well, but yeah, so something. I'm ex- yeah, I'm excited. I always love getting to to see those guys because we all like work different places and a bunch of different stuff. So yeah. It was good to see everybody, good to eat great food. I think I had a respectable draft. So nice. It was a win. All right. I know you had a, a wonderful meal today, which we're mm-hmm. gonna get to in a second. Yes. I have a taste test. 
Uh, as you can see, it's already been sampled by some people in the house. Mm -hmm. This is the Coca-Cola uh, Dream World. Hmm. Uh, this is the zero sugar version. Let's give it a go here. Mm. Not great. I mean, it's not bad. The smell. All right, let's take a sip. Okay, fruity. Definitely some fruitiness to it. Mm -hmm. Yet somehow still Coke-like. Hmm. It kind of tastes like cough medicine. Ugh. Like if it was served cold, like, like a like a um like a like a better tasting or like, or like Robitussin. Like, yeah, I was just gonna, I was trying to pull Robitussin. I don't know why I couldn't. Yeah, I I mean it's better than the other one, which was okay. Starlight, right? Yes, Starlight. I will say it's a yeah. little more like consumable than Coke Starlight. Mm -hmm. So this is Dream Tussin. <laughs> yes. Well, is it Robotism put you to sleep? Is that the idea? Maybe that's yes. why it's called Dream World. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's 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 all right. I yeah. I think Coke needs to just like slow down, and instead of this stuff, mm -hmm. let's just make a case of Coke cheaper. Yeah. How about that? Like, let's let's make that happen. Let's just do that. I think that's yeah. a that's a worthy cause we can get behind. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. It's this is something that I will never pit buy again. Okay. I'll probably finish this bottle, mm -hmm. but I'll never buy this again. But not because you want to. Because yeah, you just because I don't want it to go to waste. Right. But yeah, it's uh, it's not great. If and mm -hmm. again, I'm I've always been bad at like identifying flavors. Yeah. So if someone's got a better uh, feel for what this tastes like, let us know. Because someone didn't someone say the uh, the Starlight was like fruity pebbles. Yes. And that was accurate. That is like okay. the taste of it. Uh, this one to me tastes like Robitussin. Okay. So. You know what's uh. not an over... <laughs> <laughs> but that part of it works. <laughs> that part translates no matter what type of Coke it is. Yeah. So, you're, yeah, you are, you're set there. Yes. I didn't have to deal with high Coca-Cola prices today. Oh, no. You upgraded. Because I went to, and yes, they are a sponsor, and in the midst of this, it's, it's basically an ad for Fredo's Culinary Kitchen because I went to Fredo's today... Because a couple days ago, I got a text from my buddy Dave. Dave is one that has voicemailed slash emailed in. And he is, and apparently I'm branding him on this podcast as shrimp greater than sex. Yes. He's a shrimp greater than sex guy. We know him. Yes. So uh, Dave and uh, his wife, my good friend Laura, and my godson Luke and his sister Riley, they all came out. They were going to Legoland and they know I live close. We don't get to see each other that often because I live in Rockford. So, like, hey, you want to come out? And then Dave was like, yeah, and we can go to Fredo's for lunch afterwards. No, please. Cool. Not yeah. That. Yes, exactly. So, we go to Legoland and that's a mass of humanity in there. Uh, pretty cool and really impressive that people are able to make all that stuff. Yada, yada, yada. The highlight for me was they had Mr. Pib inside. Oh, so while, you know, people at a nor doing the normal thing at like 1045 or 11 o'clock in the morning are getting like <laughs> coffee from Starbucks. I saw Mr. Pib and I was like, yes, we will be doing that. You're stiff arming children away from the Mr. Pib machine. <laughs> yes, of course. So I got Mr. Pib there, and then you know everybody gets Legos, all this stuff, blah blah blah. Yeah, what, what, what you know, kids, all that stuff. Sure. Great. But then we go to Fredo's for yeah. lunch, and I hadn't seen Joe in so long, so I was like, it was like walking in, seeing him, like okay, like I feel I feel like as as close to a. I don't know, second home, third home, <laughs> as Fredo's can be, especially for for a food purpose. Yes. Yeah. Love being at Fredo's. Love the vibe of Fredo's. I walk in. You know it's going to be a good experience wherever you are. When the song that is playing when you're walking in is the Humpty Dance. Oh, well, that's. Did it come mm -hmm. in like it was your WWE entrance music? Dude, it should have. <laughs> because, like, it feels like eons ago now when I was, like, just barely starting at the score. And I was, uh, and even before that, and I was doing a show at IMS. Uh, with my buddy Ian, it was uh, we were the sports hump because we were on like we crossed over noon. We were like 11 to one or 10 to one, something like that. So we were like, you know, so and it was on Wednesday. So it was literally ah, over the hump. we were taking over the hump of the week. So 
we uh we started every show with the Humpty Dance. So it really would have it would have worked well as my entrance music. But uh, you know, instead we used the tuba. What'd you get? So I had the Iron Fat Burger, and it was my first time having the brisket version. Oh yeah. It's awesome. Is it now it's I know it's been a while since you've had the pulled pork version. Yes. But which one did you think was better? I'm always a sucker for brisket. Like yeah. in a vacuum, I always take brisket over pulled pork. Yeah. You so, do. So I'll I'll still go with the brisket. It made it maybe slightly more difficult to eat just because if you know brisket's a little more you actually have to give it a little bit more of a bite. Yeah, so was it like was it like chopped brisket or was it like strips of brisket? It was more strip. Okay. But still very good, very tender, like easy to eat yeah. still. And I didn't even cut it in half this time. Like I did before to be like, hmm, okay, you know, maybe be a little cleaner. No, face first. Get after it. In there. Awesome. Greatness. Yeah. Sentence fragments. <laughs> like it, <laughs> it was just... Like the everything is still so balanced and the barbecue sauce brings it all together and it's so good. And uh, and then ever there was like a gr and then Riley got a grilled cheese and then Laura and Luke shared thin crust pizza. So they got to try that and liked it. And Dave had an I'm fat burger as well. So, man, and they're just and then there were Oreo shakes that were had by oh, the yeah. kids like awesome just just great i got the rc because of course i got yeah, the of rc it's there so yeah i mean just like i walked out of there so happy and so full and everybody there is awesome and up on all of our social medias is the video that i did because it's it was because we're recording on sunday did this on sunday yep. i had the 13 inch mozzarella stick did the pull apart for the video i braided said cheese Put it down, ate it with the salsa verde too, and their salsa verde's got oh. a little bit more kick than like your generic salsa verde. So it, it too, it's so good. Like if if you live anywhere near or you drive by Schaumburg, in Schaumburg, six twenty eight South Roselle Road, like do yourself the favor and go to Fredo's. Yeah, and we mentioned Jerks. last week uh, if you're going to a Schaumburg Boomers game, it's right there. Mm -hmm. Like you're what five to ten minutes away from Schaumburg Boomer Stadium, so yep. I know a lot of people who aren't from that area go there for Boomers mm -hmm. games. If you're doing that, keep that in mind that Fredo's is right there, so plan accordingly. Yeah, like Rick said, six twenty eight South Roselle Road, Fredo's Pizza, Fredo's Pizza dot com, Fredo's Bakery dot com, there. Pizza, <laughs> and Fredo's Pizza on Instagram. By the way, what's with the New York thing where things that don't end in R mm -hmm. end in R, and things that do end in R don't? I, I don't know. But I took I my know... car to get pizza. Yeah, <laughs> that's very true. I also, one thing I do know is that the people in New York think we think about this all the time. And why do people in New York have to constantly tell you they're from New York? Oh, my God. Why does the most popular Seriously. city in all of the world have a Napoleon have, have to be the most sens Yeah, have to be the most sensitive. Yeah. Oh, and when I've mentioned that to people from New York, like when I used to work oh. on You Better You Bet. Yeah, yeah. Like when I'd be like, yeah, you know, we're very East Coast heavy. And they're like, well, people care. And I was like, you think everybody cares about the fucking New York Giants? No. I don't. No, they sure don't. Uh, we went to do, back when we went to, God, what year was that? 2012, 2013? Uh, Mac and Speaks went to New York to, uh, to see Hawks and Rangers at the mm -hmm. at MSG. And we did shows from the WFAN studios. And this was before the score had Wi-Fi. Because um, who needs that in a workplace? Right. Um, and I'm like, Hey, do you guys have Wi-Fi here? Or do I need to plug in? Right. Like, it's New York. I'm like, what does that have to do with Wi-Fi? Mm -hmm. Like just yes or no. Do you have Wi-Fi or not? Right. God, get over it. <laughs> Jagmos. All right. <laughs> shall, shall we ask the fats, Rick? Yes. All right. Let's do it. Bless me, father, for I've sinned. It's been one week since my last confession. Okay. My son, what is your confession? I'm fat. All right, we are once again running late. So here's Charlie with this week's Bacon Report. Thanks, Jay. This week we have maple pepper, chorizo, and raspberry chipotle. Bacon jams, we have the original, the bourbon, and the peach habanero. I'm thinking about a new flavor of bacon jam for the month of September uh, and beyond. We'll see uh, what, it, what it turns out as. 
Mm. Don't forget about merchandise, t-shirts, hockey jerseys, stickers, uh, and those winter hats. The ball caps are not ready yet, but I'm told they are almost done. Who knows? <laughs> Patience is key. They're pretty awesome. Have a great week. Eat tons of bacon. For the Bacon Report, I'm Charlie the Bacon Guy. Is Charlie in a helicopter? He is. He's in the uh, the bacon copter oh, okay. uh, doing reconnaissance on whatever his new bacon jam is going to be. Yeah. All right. Order some bacon from Charlie. Damn it. Charlie the Bacon Guy at gmail.com. Charlie the Bacon Guy on Instagram or at CZ the Bacon Guy on Twitter. Slide into his DMs. Send him a note and he will get you squared away with all the bacon. And look, like I know uh, we talk about Charlie's bacon all the time. It is the best. It's the mm-hmm. best. And uh, everyone that orders it agrees. Everybody that orders it orders again. Most people that order the first time say, damn, I wish I had ordered more. I wish I had just trust the pro- trusted the process. Trust the process. Mm-hmm. Get this bacon from Charlie. He is not some hack in his driveway smoking bacon and selling it. This is a professional chef making craft bacon in his very limited free time, and he kills it. So get some bacon from Charlie, charliethebaconguy at gmail.com, at charliethebaconguy on Instagram, and at czthebaconguy on Twitter. All right, we got to go to the fat phone, 708-858-3314. Another reminder, September 1st, Rick and I will be recording with the Weber Grillmaster. Make sure you submit those questions. Uh, Put the Weber thing in the subject so I can kind of separate them and keep them all together. I don't want to lose your questions, and sometimes... Things get purged when I'm going through the uh, questions week to week. So make sure you do that. Here is our first voicemail. Hey, Pat. It's Jason from Oshkosh. Longtime listeners will remember that Jay gives his mom a hard time on the podcast about not having the correct name of, I believe it's a donut place, maybe it's a bagel place. I don't remember. Yes. But I'm sure he'll inform everyone again in reminder. But at the same time, I've heard Jay called the Chewing the Fat segment, Chew the Fats, Chewing the Fats, and continuously keeps butchering the name. Jay, who are you crapping? Second, one thing (laughs) that's being done incorrectly (laughs) from coast to coast at every MLB stadium, every baseball stadium, is all of these great giveaways that they have. The White Sox have some great ones coming up, and... All the sizing stops at XL. Please, MLB, mm-hmm. read the room a little bit. Look at the people who are in the stands. Can we get some double XLs for some of these giveaways? Because they're really cool giveaways, but I hate to go to a game and then just have somebody else get to wear the school shirt that I really wanted. Keep up the good work. Thanks. That's a great point on both. Yes. Uh, my mom used to butcher the place is called Doze Guys, yes. and she used to call it Doughboys. Uh, I... Don't know exactly what we decided the name of the segment is. Is it think, chewing the fat? I think so. Okay, I'll be better about it. Um, probably, <laughs> yeah. hopefully. Yeah. But uh, Jason's point on t-shirts is absolutely right. And when I was filling the orders for the I'm Fat shirts, mm-hmm. I told Chris at Triple Threat Sports, like, do not give us smalls. No, like nobody wears small. And like, right. there might be one person who's like, do you have a small? I'm like, here's a medium. Right. And they're like, okay, fine. It'll, I'll make it work. Mm-hmm. Double X is like probably the second most popular size. XL is the most popular. Yeah. Cause like everybody can probably, not everybody, but the vast majority of people can wear that. Right. Right. But like, I would I say would think d- it, double X is as popular as large. Yeah. I was going to say like, it's extra large and then a tear down is large and double X. Probably about and equal. Then, yeah. And then what? Probably then medium, medium, then small, then yeah, then medium, then triple X. That's yeah. Like, well, that's yeah. the thing is I, I, I have, I'm out of, I ordered when I placed like the big order with uh mm-hmm. triple threat sports to fill our things for people that leave us big reviews and for our events and stuff. I made sure to order d- triple X in all. We have the pizza box. We've got the yep. um, fries and we've got the, just the basic the I'm fat podcast logo. Yeah. And I made sure I got like three or four of each in triple X and they're all mm-hmm. gone. Yep. So yeah. So yeah, they, they need to take note that you should give your fans. If I'm the white Sox or which, whichever team is handing out shirts, mm-hmm. large, extra large double X. 
Yes. I guess you should have like a kid's size too. Yeah, of course. But just, I mean, you could probably just like, hey, instead of this many mediums, why don't we split medium and double X? Mm hmm. Because you need to accommodate those people. Right. And like, you don't have to be a fat guy to wear double X. Like, anyone who's no. like big. Awkward size. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone who's tall or big is going to want a double X. Like, mm-hmm. Micah, who does our, uh, who's our video editor, video yeah. producer, is not fat at all, but he wears a double mm-hmm. X because he's tall. Right. You know, so that's that's the other thing. So, you know, just something to keep in mind down the road. Mm-hmm. All right, next voicemail. Hey, Fats. Got to talk about some things. So I'll listen to the podcast now. Uh, talk about Menards. Uh, I've often referred to Menards as uh, the man's target. Uh, it's got manly <laughs> stuff and all the groceries. So that's accurate. Yeah. Uh, Jay, always talking about uh, cherry cola flavored things. The best cherry cola flavored candy was Dum Dum. Oh. It was amazing. Mm. They don't make it anymore. So if you find them, check them out. Last but not least, uh, when did Wendy start selling family size nuggets? Oh, yes. Yeah. eleven ninety nine fifty 50 nugs. I'll take it. All right, Fab. Have a good one. Rick, come back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, eleven ninety nine for 50 nuggets. That's pretty good. That's really good. Because 20, 20 nuggets at McDonald's is four ninety nine. Yeah. That's a pretty good deal. That's a game changer. Wow. That could feed me Hope and Addy plus. Wow. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Uh, the Target thing is dead on. And the Dum Dums thing, mm-hmm. not Target, Menards thing is dead on, that it's Target for men. Yeah. Um, the Dum Dums, my favorite is the cream soda. The cream, the cream soda yeah. dum dums, and the and the root had, beer dum dums. I haven't had dum dums in so long. It There's has a, been for some many reason, years. Aurelio always has them when you go eat there. Yeah. So I think like that's why I have them semi frequently. <laughs> okay. Because they're that just like sense. as you walk out there, just sitting there. Yeah. And I always go for the cotton candy, the cream soda, or the or the root beer. So yeah. I'll, I will keep an eye out for the cherry cola one, but it, he said it's not made anymore. So. Oh, the Wendy's made me think of something from my Minnesota trip this week. Okay. There's a uh, Wendy's connected to a pilot in this town that is uh, I, I, Mostyn, I think is the name. Uh, it's like I stop there to, to fill up on gas like every single time. I, I just know it, it's a nice exit. It's exit 69 in nice. Wisconsin. Yeah. And uh, and I go in there with my with uh, with Shane and we're like, OK, we're just going to we're stopping at gas. We'll get lunch here. They say, well, we're uh, we're out of barbecue sauce. Because Shane got nuggets. Thankfully, he got spicy nuggets because they were also out of regular nuggets. No, uh, that's okay. That's that's a decent compromise. But yeah, but it's very. What are very you doing, odd. In Boston? Even, even, yeah, <laughs> even in the middle of no, in the middle of nowhere, it's like I'm gonna see if I. Oh, I got it right. It is Boston, Boston, Massachusetts. Yes, with their grand population of forty four hundred people. That's actually more than I thought, honestly. Well, Anywho, get your shit together. That, yeah, that made me think of that. <laughs> All right, we got uh, two more here, and then we'll get to the emails. Hey, Fats, this is Steve, and I'm just calling you guys in response to a voicemail that was left last week. Get a gentleman looking for 20-ounce RC, and I just want to let him know that we sell it at just about every dollar general in the Chicagoland area. So I don't remember if he said he was in the area or not, but if you go to Dollar General you will find 20-ounce RC um, pretty much at all of them, so at least there's guaranteed there. Um, and you guys also were questioning Diet RC and Diet Right, and so they have two different items. So Diet Diet RC is available fountain only. Uh, it's not distributed by uh, okay. by RC company, but uh, the trademark is, uh, uh, I guess, sold to uh, the, the fountain distribution. Um, and so it is available, but it's available fountain only. And when you go to compare it to Diet Right, Diet Right is the only Diet Cola brand out there that has no sodium in it. So that's really kind of what sets it apart from all the other diets out there. Um, so if you're watching sodium in your diet, um, you just go, you can go with uh, the diet right, and you are good to go. Um, but uh, they are two completely different things. Just wanted to let you guys mm. know. And of course, diet right, you can get uh, all over Chicago and area. So uh, thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. 
That's very helpful info. Make sure you leave your Seriously. name next time, by the way, so we can thank he said you. Steve. Oh, he did say Steve? Yeah. You sorry, ass? Steve. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Diet RC, by the way, Fredo's. Mm-hmm. Yep. Get some at Fredo's. All right, we got one just, more just voicemail here from, from Lance, and mm-hmm. it's long. Edit yourself, Lance. Okay, so this is on the spot <laughs> reporting. This is Lance, your uh, your friend from the Tournament of Junk. And I'm just listening to the episode where you're talking about the crispy minis, the hostess crispy minis. I'm intrigued. I happen to be out. I walk into a big chain dollar store. Let's just say big chain dollar store. We won't name the, the brand name to throw anybody under the bus particularly. And I find one bag of those crispy minis, and it's the cookies and cream flavor, so I'm excited. I grab it. Of course, it's in the wrong place. It's not anywhere near where it should be in the store, but I find it, and I take it to the register, and the guy scans it, and it comes up as five cents. So, he, And it's the full-size bag, so obviously there's some kind of mis-scanning issue or something. So he scans it a couple times, keeps on coming up five cents. He's like, oh, let me talk to the manager, because I just obviously this is not right. So he goes to the manager, finds the guy in the back end of the store. I do not hear the conversation. And he comes back. And the first thing he does is call me boss, which obviously next to chief, that's the most offensive thing you can call a stranger. Bad start. So he's like, hey, boss, just let let you know, the manager says these are expired. I can't sell them. I'm like, is there a date on it? I didn't see a date on it. And we look at the back, and there's no date on it. And I he just makes up some BF about, well, no, they're expired in our system, and we can't, you know, there's no way to sell it. I'm like, whatever. So I throw my hands up in the air, walk out without my crispy minis. So I will go to Mariano's or Jewel or somewhere, 7-Eleven, whatever. I'll find them. I will try them. They sounded intriguing. I must have them. Hopefully they're as good as those cinnamon hostess bouncers that I found. Those are like one of the greatest things ever created. And that is it. I will try. But just shut down on my, uh, my, my hunt for the crispy minis. So, but I will try them. Thanks for the tip, guys. And keep up the great work on the show. Have a good day. Talk to you soon. All right. Well, let's keep us updated on that. Uh, that is disappointing. Get better big dollar. Uh, yeah, I don't. Can't be Dollar General. We have no, a Dollar General not. insider. Den- General, dollar General would never do that. Hmm. Um, but yeah, that's, I wonder if it's a plant related company. If, if the customer's like, just give it to me. Yeah, just give it to him. Who cares? Like, who cares? Who's going to go back <laughs> and? Hey, I'm going to sue you because you sold me expired Hostess. Come on. Come on now. Get it together. Dollar place. All right. Let's do our voicemails here as I stall, as I find the sound bite. Ask a fat about this and that. It's time to chat with the fats. First one here comes from Kyle. He says, hey, guys, I'm wondering if you've tried Dreamland Coke. Yes, I just did. Mm. The label says it's a dream flavored, but I'm getting mainly raspberry. First starlight. Now, Dreamland, what will the next mystical flavor be? Wind? Friendship? <laughs> what was it? The, the sweetness of adults? Was that the, uh, yes. <laughs> the, can- the Chinatown yes. candy I tried? Yeah. Well, that, that's a different type of dream. Yeah, I think so. That's a nocturnal emissions. Maybe that's yes. the next uh, the next name for Coke. Uh, boy, that's thick. Uh, anyway, it's uh, yeah. it's not that good. I guess raspberry yeah. is... That, that seems... Mm-hmm. Let me give it one more swig to see if I detect raspberry. Hmm. Sure, I could buy that. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that it's not. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Good. Uh, all right. Next one, because his voicemail wasn't long enough, is from Lance. <laughs> <laughs> Friends, as a staunch fan of Dots, I've tried everything, and sadly, I found that they really should stick with pretzels, which they do magnificently. The cheese curls and pork rinds are not good at all and are a stain on the otherwise great Dots portfolio. Don't waste your time or calories. Wow. Ooh. Damn, that is a wow. that is a scathing review from Lanch on the Dots just, cheese curls. Just think if he found those at that big dollar store, he couldn't hate that anymore. Boy, that's tough. I, uh... I almost bought some the other day because I saw mm-hmm. that big bag, but it was, like you said, it was like four ninety nine. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm not paying five dollars for a taste test. Right. You know, sell me a small bag, or if someone's got them at a party, I'll right. try them. But I'm not popping that much cash for yeah a taste test. Unless unless you're me and it's crumble cookies. Oh uh, well, yeah, but more. you know, like <laughs> crumble <laughs> cookies, knew, though, yeah. you know, it's not going to be bad. Right. Exactly. Like you're assured greatness. Right. So all right, this one comes from Brent and Drew. From Littleton, Colorado. 
He says, hey, boys, we're huge fans and need your help. I'm driving my son out to Michigan from Colorado for college uh, on 823 and 24. I've studied the fat map and tried researching restaurants myself. However, there are just too many outstanding options. We'll likely be driving through on 824 around dinner time and really need your thoughts on where to stop. That's a click or two off I-80 between Joliet and the Indiana border. Friend, you're in my wheelhouse. We can't get good Italian beef or a tavern-style pizza in Colorado, so something along those lines is appreciated. We have one shot at making the most out of our dinner experience, so we're looking to the experts for your help. Love the podcast and appreciate your expertise. All right. Well, if you look at the MFAT map, there is a lot of stuff along the I-80 corridor there. Um and I'm looking at it now. And if you want to look at the IMFAT map, it's very easy to do. If you go to the link tree in our bios, uh, you will find that. And you can see all the places we have highlighted uh, throughout. So we're kind of like looking at Mokina. Um, you know, you got the crumble cookies right there we just talked about. You've got uh, the taco house uh, place I went to in Mokina mm-hmm. as well. Um, Jojo Bistro, which used to be called Joy Yi. If you're into Thai food, that is right off 80 Okay. Uh, next to that is Fratello's, which is like an Italian deli. Okay. So anything like, is that like like beef or, or tavern style related? That's what I'm trying to think of. And and I, I hesitate to like just default to sending him to Homewood. Mm-hmm. But you've had Lassen's and Lassen's is great. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, and that's right before you get to Indiana. You get off mm-hmm. on the, uh, you would get off on Dixie Highway there and then take that. You also have the original Aurelio's Pizza. And that's going to be my official recommendation. Okay. Now it's not just a shot. You're going to probably take a 10 minute detour, but if you're driving from Colorado to Michigan, why not whatever. go to Aurelio's in Homewood, 181 62 Harwood Avenue in Homewood. It is the original ask for it. Well done in the old oven. Old oven. That mm-hmm. is key. Well done old oven. And I promise you, you will be very, very pleased. And while you're out there, you can stop at the Homewood Dairy Queen. It's kind of an, an institution in town. Uh, but yeah, if I'm if that's what you're looking for, tavern style pizza, that sort of stuff, right off the highway, Aurelio's Pizza in Homewood. Again, I'll give you the address: one eighty one sixty two Harwood Avenue. People in Chicago know Aurelio's, like it is yes. an institution here. So, like people are going to be shouting at the podcast, like, "Well, duh, of course, Aurelio's. Everybody knows that." If you're from out of town, maybe you don't. It's a little different than most tavern style, yeah, but it is sauce. It's a sweeter sauce, but it's delicious. Mm-hmm. You can't go wrong. Uh, so stop at Aurelio's in Homewood. Uh, that will scratch your itch. You'll get the full Chicago uh, tavern style experience. Good cheap beer. The atmosphere of the place is really, really cool. You should be able to just walk in like you don't need a reservation, anything like that. Um, yeah, that's what I would recommend. Uh, Aurelio's Pizza in uh in homewood that's the original so do that up and you'll be i think you'll be satisfied let us know if you go leave a, leave us a voicemail or an email and let us know what you thought i agree <laughs> all right last one here is from mike i haven't heard you talk about beef rolls and wondered if you like them if so do you have any go-to spots i know they're popular in the south burbs slash joliet but overall don't feel they get the notoriety they deserve I had the one from Rock City this weekend, and they, and then listened to the pod, so it made me think about it. I have not had a beef roll before. Neither have I. And what this looks like, Rick, mm-hmm. is like a breaded calzone style. Um, I don't know. How would you describe this? I know you can see it in the picture. I just put it in our little chat here. Uh, huh. Almost like a beef calzone? Yeah, kind of. It looks fantastic. Mm-hmm. I will try one of those. I, I just have not seen it anywhere, at least where I'm at. No. Um, but I'm out in the Joliet area often because that's where my uh, brother and sister, uh, Natalie and Chris, live. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe I will uh, maybe I'll hit that place up. It looks really tasty. Yes. And I'm report back because it's a bit more of a drive for me <laughs> to get there. And that's let true. me tell you, I've done my fair share of driving. Yeah, you've put enough miles I on the don't. old... Uh, I don't need to be in a car longer than I need to anymore. It's in Rockdale. I don't even know where Rockdale is. Let me see. Rockdale is. I'm looking here. Okay. So it is east of Joliet. It's like 80 and what is this? 80 and Larkin. 
Okay. Kind it of. is it is like it is like yeah, eighty and eighty and route six, eighty and fifty two, that area. Okay. Um so yeah, it's I think it's it's just south of Joliet. Okay. So all right. I will do research to see if there are any out by me. If there are, I will try. But at this moment in time, I'll be damned if I'm driving that far <laughs> just for a taste test right now. I will mail you so, some. I'll okay. shove it in a I'll put it in a in a UPS box and ship it to you. Yeah, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> All right. What could go wrong? Nothing. All right. Let's wrap this one up. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, we had we knew we had a lot to get to. And then because we're us, we tangented and went in different what? directions. But Not that's us. what we're here for. Yeah. No, us never. Follow us on all of our social medias at I'm Fat Pod, I'm Fat Pod at gmail.com, Patreon, T Public. Check those things out. Yeah. Lots of uh, lots of T Public sales. So we really thank you for that. YouTube.com slash I'm Fat Podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. Five star review would be awesome. We are eight away from 500 reviews of the podcast. And awesome. those types of things always help us in terms of ratings and then you know subscribing and unsubscribing and resubscribing and juking the stats because hey everybody does it so we might as well do it as well so screw it true and the best thing you can do is check out our sponsors charlie the bacon guy mazda of orland park and for the love of god go to fredo's culinary kitchen because it'll make your stomach happy yeah do yourself the favor yes or and also don't forget about the cookies because they're cookies and we talk crumble here fredosbakery.com don't sleep on it so for jay i'm rick i'm still happy because i have a stomach full of fredos and this is the i'm fat podcast all right i think we got a lot accomplished here today